say he, or the person, or the individual, not just a he, but anybody, who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. Here we have the law of sowing and reaping. We reap what we sow. Paul is telling his, his church, he reads in the Amplified, he says, remember this principle. He who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also, it'll come back to them sparingly and grudgingly. But he who sows generously so that blessings may come to somebody else with an attitude of blessing other people, he will also reap generously and with blessings. So the first thing about prosperity is, is our attitude. How we choose to live our life. You know, if you just invest and sow a little bit of seed and you're just good a little bit of the time and you're sparing and you're cheapskate and how you do things and, you know, and that's your attitude and you got real, a real tight wad, so to speak, you know, then that's what you can expect to come back on you. But if you're a guy that sows bountifully and you know, is a cheerful giver, and I'm not talking about someone that's not paying attention to their money. I'm talking about somebody that's calculated, hears God and gives what God tells them to give, and they, they're always looking and ready to do whatever. When they hear what God, and they follow through, and, and they give a blessing, and, and give it generously, and give it with a good attitude, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to come back on you. Luke 6, 38 says, Give, be a giver, give something, and it's going to come back on you, but not just come back on you, but it's going to come back and it's going to be poured into your lap, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, and it says, for by your standard or by your attitude, how you measure out, it will be measured back to you. So you know, if you're real cheap and chintzy and tight and you just give a little bit Say if you're sandwich, then that's the kind of attitude you can come back. If you're the kind of guy that cuts it in half or says, take it all, whatever you need, and that then that's the same kind of the standard of measure you use is the standard of measure that God will measure back to you, but it won't just come back to you, it'll be a boomerang effect, and it'll come back pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Filled up to the top, running over and overflowing. So what I'm saying is you can't now give God. Proverbs 11 says there is one who scatters, who's a giver, or he's generous, and he increases all the more, he gets richer. In other words, there's, there's a guy that just gives away, and he gives away, and he scatters his blessings, he spreads them out, he blesses this person, he has an attitude, and that's the way he lives his life. He blesses them, and somehow there's a mysterious thing that goes on the way God does things. The more he gives, the richer he becomes. That's not the way the world works, is it? It doesn't make sense to tithe. But it makes sense to not, it doesn't make any sense to not tithe. It's crazy. If you're not tithing, I'm telling you here, you're insane. If you're you're expecting God to bless you. And if, you know, if, like I said, if somebody robbed me, I'm not going to give more. And if you're robbing God, God's not going to give you more. He's going to put you under a curse. He's going to say, no way, I don't want nothing to do with you. Why would I give to you when you're holding? You can't even give me 10%. Why would I give you more? But there's another guy, <clears throat> one who withholds, robs or defrauds or cuts back on God. What is justly due? What's justly due is your 10%. Or holding back what God has told you to give other people. There's another kind of guy that withholds just to do, and it results in only one. He gets, in order to get deeper and deeper and deeper. I know some people that have said, "Well, I'll just not tithe this month because I've got to pay off, you know, this thing." And they take it and they shift it and they hold back on God and they bless them here, and all of a sudden, something else pops up over here. Next thing you know, the car breaks down and. It, and, and here your tithe was $100, and now you got a $600 car bill. Go figure, imagine that. People said, oh, you know, I can't understand why I can't get ahead. I can't understand you know, why I'm prospering. It's because of your standard of measure. Your attitude is such that you're cheap, and you're not giving, and you're holding back, and you give to God that's, oh, you know, and oh, and oh, you know, and, you know, and, and you're wondering, you know, God's going to get his money. You know what I'm saying? 
come easy, come hard, but you will come. So, you know, people, people think that, you know, holding back, it's okay. And I, I have all kinds of excuses in the world. I'm just saying, well, you know, I'm just, it's really up to you. I'm just telling you about how I live my life. I'm debt free. I've, I've been debt free. I had to work off sixty thousand dollars in debt, and I won't go into all that. But you know, today that's I apply these principles, and God blesses me. I've never lacked for one. There's always money in my checkbook. There's always things to do. I can't tell you how many times I've given, and somebody showed up and blessed me more. I pray for that kind of prosperity, and I expect that kind of prosperity because I do what God tells me to do. I can't tell you how many times I've walked up to you know, scalpers and people, you know, and, and people give me tickets. The games, oh no, they're free, I give them to you. I can't tell you how many times money's come unexpectedly from unknown places. God will see to it that if you do your part, He will do His part. Amen. Now the problem is, God's a giver. How many know God is a giver? That's His nature. You, the Son of Man, did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life. Jesus came to this planet not to be worshipped and all. He came to be a giver. He gave His Son. He gave His whole life to be a giver. He, he, that's His nature. And we are most like God when we give. And we're most unlike God when we don't give. So here God has poured into us. And He's blessed us. And so He expects us to give. To other people. Luke 6.48 or 7 says much is 7.48 much to whom much has been given much is required. The Bible says when God has given you much and he's blessed you and he's done all these different things you know then he expects he expects you it's okay not it's not okay to not get, he expects you to give to other people. How I many know what happens when we eat more food than we burn up? <laughs> Constipated. <laughs> this is the problem today. God is packing in, is packed, is packed in. We're sitting around taking it all in, taking it all in, and we've just gotten fat and slapped sorry, and we've gotten spirits and constipated, and we're wondering why God doesn't bring me more. Well, God's already given you more than you can handle, and you're not practicing God's principles by you being a giver and you're being a taker, therefore you're spiritually constipated and you're sitting there wondering why I can't get things moving again. I'm telling you, when God has filled you up and He's given you and, and, and you're not releasing and you're not getting a good spiritual bowel movement, I hate to say it, but you're going to stay knotted up. There's going to be a ceiling put over you where God's not going to give you another thing. What happens is when God gives to us and we don't give back, it blocks the flow. It chokes off prayers prosperity. So it's like a bucket here. God pours it in, He pours it in, He fills it up to here, and that's all He can give us. So to give you more, you've got to let a little out, don't you? Yeah. You know, I was at a family reunion, and all I did was eat, 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 eat. I got to where I don't even want no more food, man. I had to get back and detox. I had to get to the gym and get back on the track. You know, I had to get back on the protein and get rid of the carbs, and I had to get some things moving again. So I was backed up. What is spirit? What is step twelve say right here? The twelve steps of recovery. We get all the way through this, and God heals us. He delivers us. He rescues us. We work the steps. We get all down to the best. The, the last one, the last one says, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of working all these steps, I, we, we, all of us, try as a principle, as a habit, to carry this message to other people in their practice, these principles in all of our affairs. What it says is, okay, now you've got what you want. Now, now, now the key to keeping everything you've given now is you've got to give back. You go to AA up here to these meetings here, and they'll tell you, you got to give back, you got to give back, you got to give back. The problem all of our life is we've been takers yeah. instead of givers. Yeah. We're like ticks. We suck the life out of everything. Yeah. When that guy's done, we go suck on somebody else. How I many you know ticks and people like that? Yeah. They're all over. Mm -hmm. So there has to be a natural, we call it reciprocal living. 
Isn't it kind of nice for people to reciprocate? You know, I've blessed you, I've helped you, I say nice things to you. It'd be nice to get a little bump back from you once in a while. Reciprocate. That's reasonable, isn't it? When God's given to us, He expects us to give. He expects us to reciprocate. So there has to be, you know, there's nothing wrong with expecting God to fill you up. But as you release and outflow, then God will bring the inflow. You go outflow and inflow, and then you just keep, keep things moving. You keep the bowel moving happening. Matthew 6, 25 says that uh, whoever wishes to save his life is going to lose it. <clears throat> whoever hoards and has that attitude of saving, the word safe means to play it safe. That means I got what I want. I don't care about it. I'm playing it safe now. I'm way ahead. You play baseball and you're way ahead on the score. The coach yells, play it safe. Don't get picked off. You're way ahead of this thing. Don't do something stupid. We got the game won. You're behind no points. You know, don't get knocked out. Play it safe. That's what that scripture says. He who plays it safe. Saves life, lives his life with that attitude of hanging on to what he has and he doesn't give, he's going to lose it anyway. Whoever loses what he has, for God's sake, is going to find life, the abundant life. That missionary from wherever that place was says that he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep. To give what he cannot gain. He is no fool who, who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. You're not any, any fool that gives what he can't keep anyway. It doesn't belong to him anyway. He can't take it with him. He can't take you know, to gain something he can't lose. So he's saying, this missionary, I'm still trying to think of the name of that place. Where, it's Jim Elliott. Yeah, what's the name of the place he went to mission? Ecuador. 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 Now he, he, he gave his life. I mean, these people were wealthy families, and there was like a group of couples that went into Ecuador, and you know they said, "Hey, we're going to give up our life. We're willing to die. It don't matter. It all belongs to God. If we lose our lives, so what?" They went in there and they got their they got killed. But before they went, in, he said, "Yeah, I ain't no fool." People say you're a fool. You're going to die. You're not coming back. Well, so be it. I'm no fool to give what I can't keep to gain later in heaven what I can't possibly lose. So there has to be a shift. In our attitude. Paul says, Now I say this, he who sows sparing will reap sparing, and he who sows bounded will reap bountifully. And it says, Each person, each one must do as he has purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, because God lives a cheerful giver. The Amplified says, Let each one make up his own mind as he has purposed in his heart, not reluctantly. Sorrowfully or under compulsion. The Lord just says that, hey, everybody needs to make a decision about how they're going to live their life. You need to come to your conviction. I have my convictions, and they work for me, what I'm sharing. But you've got to take, and you've got to come to a decision of how you want to live your life. Make that standard. Decide how you're going to live your life, and then do it. Don't just pick at you, well, one day I'll tie, one day I won't, I'm going to be a giver here. No, make a decision what belongs to God, and give it. God loves a cheerful giver. He'll take it from a grouch, but he likes to have it from the heart. So, there needs to be a shift from a have to to a want to mentality. Now, the way we choke off Prosperity is you come to your own decision that you're going to continue to be selfish and self centered and live the life the way you want to. And the bottom line is, you know, you reap what you sow. So let me ask you today, what is, you know, are you robbing God? Are you giving God his 10%? If you're not, then how can you expect God to prosper? So number one, number five, if you want to experience God's prosperity, you better start tithing. Or you're not going to prosper. I can promise you that. Another thing you want to do is if, if you want to prosper, you need to make a decision and Stick to that standard, and, and the way you hear that is you hear from God. God tells you the standard. It's not your standard, your idea of what you think. No, you hear from God, you come to a decision, come in agreement with what God said, and then you live your life like that way. If you do that, you can be promised that you will prosper. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, next week, we'll carry on to 7 and 8. Amen? Amen.